All right, thank you for uh, tuning into this new video here on the Museum Modeler channel. Uh, this is going to be a, hopefully a quickish comparison video looking at two different examples of the USS Essex CV9 carrier in 1700 scale. Uh, we've got trumpeters kit here on the left and dragons on the right. Now I've gone ahead and I've opened up both these kits and I've looked through them and taken some notes. So this will be a little bit less exploratory and more explanatory as it were. Um, also when it comes to looking at details and close-ups, rather than try to get the camera to show these views, I'll go ahead and take pictures and put those into the video um, in relevant points. But anyways, so the Essex class kit that we're looking at here, even though it's specifically for the USS Essex CV9, you know, I guess it could in theory be for uh, any short haul Essex. You know, the Essex came in long and short haul, long haul came later. This is gonna be the earlier hull models, which was uh, about the first, almost first half of the class. So Trumpeter's kit, we'll go ahead and start with that. Um, of course, comes with the blue sea base. They've been doing this with a lot of their kits lately. It's a really nice little feature. Entirely accurate looking? No, not really. But um, if you're not going to trouble yourself with an additional display stand, you know, it certainly could be worth your time to uh, just spruce this up a little bit, and there you go. It's a ready made display. But onto the kit itself. So it's nicely enough molded. I did open up these bags, I should state. I measured out the hull. Single piece hull, water lined. Um, I like this not split down the middle. Neither of these kits have a split down the center line hull. The problem with the trumpeter kit, however, is the length. This thing is just a hair over 14 and a half inches long, which if you scale that out, it comes to 849 feet in 1700 scale. Now let's go ahead and show for comparison's sake, the same piece on the dragon kit. Now the dragon kit is uh, a bit more of the hull. You do have more of the hull sides for the hangar deck incorporated into it. Of course, those are extra parts that you put on the trumpeter kit. But regardless, let's just look at size. I'm not sure if you can identify or see rather the difference. You know, here I'll line up the sterns on the same line. So the dragon kit is clearly longer. In fact, it's just a hair under 15 inches. So that's a half inch difference. Might not be much, but if you're looking at scale, the trumpeter kit winds up being about 21 scale feet shorter than the 870 feet of the Essex. Whereas the Dragon kit is a foot and a half longer. This scales out to 871.5 feet, so pretty darn close at 700 scale. So bear that in mind that as you go and we look through these kits, the size is always going to be a difference. There's always going to be some scale issue which is off. But right off the bat, we know that the Dragon kit is closer to, uh, to true scale for the Essex class carriers. Something else with the trumpeter kit is that the flight deck comes in two pieces. There's one, the other is in this piece here with the stand. I don't care for this, to be perfectly honest. Um, anytime you've got a deck that's split, you're gonna have a seam issue. And when it comes to the detail on these pieces, uh, you got tie downs and wood planking. If you're going to try to blend that, you're going to lose some of that detail, and that's hard as heck to rescribe. So that's another strike against the uh, trumpeters. The dragon flight deck, by comparison, single piece, one nice long flight deck. Now both the trumpeter and the dragon have the uh, the elevators molded, opened or closed, so you can do what you want for that. In addition, of course, to the side elevator, these are just the flight deck elevators. But um, the detail on the Dragon is actually, I think it's a little bit over detail, over scale detail. I think the Trumpeter's flight deck detail with the tie downs and the wood is a little bit more realistic looking than the Dragon's. But then again, double flight, two piece flight deck, single piece flight deck. So it's, it's a pro and a con for each. The hanger deck on each, um, the hanger decks are pretty comparable. Um, this is the hanger deck piece right here. Here's trumpeters. You know, again, there's a scale issue, but you're, you're going to get, you know, the whole length of the hanger deck. It's got um, pretty generic um, grid lines in it. It's very similar to the um, the trumpeters kit, rather. It's very similar to the trumpeter USS Hornet, which we did a video review of a while back, looking at the three different Yorktown classes, but it's pretty similar. The Dragon Kit, as you can see, it has 
This is the walls molded into it. Uh, these are the spaces below the, the island. Whereas with the trumpeter kit, you're gonna have to add those in. Again, those are pieces, but it comes as a, a molded detail already on the dragon kit. I must use slide molds for a lot of these pieces. Yeah, so the hangar deck detail is pretty comparable on both. As far as the inside of the hangar decks, neither one has a whole lot of detailing on the walls, um, with the exception of, of course, that blocky area underneath the island. So you'll want to do some scratch building if you want added details um, other than those. All right. I'll go and do the air wings because those are here on top. The Dragon Kit, it comes with six F6Fs, six TBFs, and six SBDs. So not a particularly comprehensive air wing. You get 18 aircraft total, six fighters, six torpedo bombers, and then six dive bombers. The Trumpeter Kit has four TBFs, four SBDs, four SB2Cs. So you got an extra aircraft type in there. And then of course, four F6F um, Hellcats. So you have more variety, but fewer aircraft. You've got 16 aircraft that come with the Trumpeter Kit, uh, 18 that come with the Dragon. So a little bit, uh, again, trade off there. When it comes to the quality of the, of the aircraft, they're pretty comparable. The Dragon aircraft, uh, they come with wings that are poseable, whereas if you want to pose the trumpeter aircraft, you've got to do a little bit of surgery, but I've done that enough times, it's really not that difficult. Okay, let's try to keep our piles separate here. The sprue breakdown is pretty similar. Um, you get a lot of the same pieces per kit. Um, there is a quality difference though. Again, I'll show this with photographs. Trumpeter has splinter shields that are not scale, but much, much closer to scale than dragons. The dragon splinter shields are way over thick. I don't have a micrometer, but if I had to guess, I'd say they're about a foot and a half to two feet scale thickness, which is just giant. I mean, <laughs> you don't have splinter shields that are two feet thick. Um, by comparison, the trumpeter's shields, you know, they're, they're probably a good five, six inches scale thickness. So again, over scale but not distressingly so. Dragon's details are just, they're way too fat. With 700 scale, you almost always want to get aftermarket um, armament because it's really difficult to get Orlikens and Bofors mounts in 700 scale unless you're going with a resin, you know, or occasionally a, a polystyrene replacement. That said, the Dragon secondary armament is really nice for a styrene mold, um, especially the Orlikins. It's even got the shoulder mounts now. Is it a little thick? Yeah, it's a little too fat, but the details at least there. Um, these also, the Dragon kits also have the uh, shields on each side of the Orlikin, so a nice addition there. Again, too thick though. Honestly, you're best off going with uh, an aftermarket. The best that I've seen is the ones by Ocean Spirit, it's 10 pack of Orlikens for like eight or nine bucks. So it gets pricey, but the detail is just fantastic. All the same, if you're going for out of the box, the Dragon armament wins as far as detail is concerned. Scale size, the, the Trumpeter's, it's close enough to scale, so it's does not matter, but the detail is just really sorely lacking. You know, Trumpeter came out with a USS Lexington CV2 kit a while back. It was really nice as far as the secondary armament. I don't know why they don't use those same dies when they're making molds for their other 700 carriers, but both their Essex and their USS Hornet, their, their stock ammunition was weak. Speaking of uh, one more thing, the 5-inch mounts, the twin mounts that come with the Trumpeter kit, they're a little bit under scale as far as details are concerned. The 5-inch mounts with the Dragon, though, are much closer to, to accurate as far as the range-finding apparatus on top of them. And outside of that, you know, you get a lot of the same. <clears throat> you know, details a little bit thick on the dragon, details a little bit lacking on the trumpeter. So it's, it's, it's pick your battles. Uh, one thing I will state about the dragon kit is that the deck edge elevator, prominent feature on the Essex class carriers, the deck edge elevator as molded has some decent detail underneath for gridding, whereas the trumpeter elevator is just completely, completely bare on the underside. That said, Trumpeter, or, sorry, Dragon went ahead and included my best friend, Photo Etch. So there is a Photo Etch fret that is included on the Dragon kit. It's not a lot of Photo Etch. You get your uh, deck edge antenna, 
you get the underside of the elevator, you get a couple of crew, which is kind of a nice touch, and uh, a radar. So that's, that's really about it. The trumpeter, by comparison, has no photo etch, so you have to get aftermarket. In fact, that's what I've done. I picked up a Flyhawk Essex set when I got this kit. So there's a hyper detail photo etch set waiting for me whenever I decide to tackle this, which honestly is probably going to be pretty soon. One last thing to mention about the Dragon. It includes a very interesting feature. It's an extra flight deck, but it's clear. This allows you to, you know, go crazy with detailing the hangar deck, and you won't lose out on all that detail. You can then look into it and see it. The two problems I have with that are that, number one, no aircraft carrier ever had a clear flight deck, and I like modeling realistic subjects. The other issue, um, again, hopefully photographs will show this, is that there are a ton of ejector pin marks on this thing. I'm counting, oh gosh, at least 12, 16, and this is clear. So if you want to buff these out, you've got a heck of a lot of work ahead of you in terms of cleaning up the clear plastic. And I just don't think that's something that I want to deal with. Now, I'm going to hang on to this. I don't think that the, uh, the Dragon Essexes come with the clear decks anymore. So I'll hang on to it in case in a future bill I want to use it. Just pick up a new Essex and use the clear deck instead. So I'm not going to use it when I do put this together the first time. But that being said, it's an interesting feature and an interesting concept. It looks like it's pretty thick plastic, which does have an issue for clarity as well. But you know, I'll take some photographs and post them. Uh, let's see, both kits are waterline, both kits come with a display base in case you wish to uh, display them full hull. Here's the undersides of the hulls. The trumpeter does have a waterline plate. Uh, the Essex uh, for Dragon does not. So you're going to have potentially a rigidity issue. Um, now the Dragon kit has one, two, three, four. Now they both have cross members, and in fact the Dragon kit has even fewer than the trumpeters. So the trumpeter is overall probably going to be a little bit more stable, though this doesn't feel too bad. Maybe with the hanger deck in place, it'll be better. Oh, I see this sticking up. One last nifty detail to mention is the island. The Dragon Island is one piece. So of course you have to add the catwalks and the details, but the actual island structure is fully, fully together already. So you'll have no nasty seams along the sides. It must be a slide mold, similar to how they did their... Um, the Turpets 1700 kit that I built not long ago. So, you know, it's nice. Which do I like more? I don't know. I'd have to go through and build them both to see. And I will build them both. Uh, one will probably be a USS Essex. The other will probably be a USS Franklin. I've always wanted to do uh, a USS Franklin. You've seen that historic photo of it, you know, listing heavily with the fire hose water coming out the sides, with the poles in the flight deck and the island leaning crazy after she was struck by some bombs and a kamikaze, I think. So I'm not sure on that. Anyways, I've always wanted to do that vignette. And um, the Essex for Dragon, I'll probably just do as an Essex. USS Essex, I don't know. It'll be one of the short holds. I'll have to see what has the more interesting story behind it. I thought about doing them both side by side as part of a small murderer's row vignette. But the detailing on them is its different enough to where you would be able to tell they're not identical models. You know, you're going to want to do two Dragons or two Trumpeters if you're going to do something like that. Or for a full murderer's row, you need six Essexes, so good luck with that. Okay, well that about wraps up uh, this look at the two different USS Essex CV9 kits in 1700 scale. You know, good luck looking at them both, and hopefully this will give you a little bit of information if you are trying to decide which kit do you want to do. You know you want to do an Essex, but which one? Hopefully this gives you just a little bit of extra information um, to go off of. Thank you very much for watching this and uh, happy modeling.